Hello folks and welcome back to Open Source Tonight. Today what I wanted to talk to you all about and actually show you a little bit about is an audio system that's relatively new in Linux. It's called Pipewire. And for people that have been using Linux for a long time may be aware of something called Pulse Audio. Pipewire, you could argue, is kind of like the new and improved Pulse Audio. And what Pipewire is, it's an audio and video multimedia framework, server, whatever you want to call it, that will allow your devices and the software to talk to each other easily. So we take a look at the documentation here. Pipewire, according to them, is a low-level multimedia framework that provides, and then you know they list it, uh, both very low latency audio and video processing, capable of uh, real-time compatible plugins, yada yada yada. <clears throat> so you know there's a bunch of different things here. We could look at the documentation. This over here is their actual um, website itself. And you can see here they do have video support. They give an example there. I think the software is interesting. Uh, it says it has seamless support for Pulse Audio, Jack, Elsa, and GStreamer applications. So it makes it easy for you to uh, move stuff over. Uh, for the most part, I haven't any issues with it. Uh, I'm running Pipewire on Rocky Linux. They ship it by default. I wouldn't advise you try to install it by hand. This is the first time I played with it. But it seems to be uh, pretty stable as far as an audio server goes. The only thing I had issues with was DaVinci Resolve and I had to install a, I think it was an Ulsa plugin or something for Pipewire to get uh, playback to work smoothly. Because it was working, but it was like being strange. But anyway, um, other than that, it, it works really good. And so we can even look here, they've got like different C programs. Um, and I guess, yeah, this just tells you the version. Let's see here, what does this do? So yeah, this looks to be like yeah, getting the list of like devices or something from the looks of. But regardless, um, this will allow you to go ahead and do a bunch of stuff. Now, I mean, most of you are probably not programmers, and I don't plan on writing anything right now. That's Pipewire. I might play with some Python stuff. I've seen there was some Python uh, things I can play with with it, so I might do that. But I just thought it'd be interesting to inform you. This is, I think, potentially the future of audio, and. These days, I see a lot of stuff shipping it. There's a bunch of different things down here as far as resources go. Probably should have made this text bigger for you all. I just not thought about that. But they have got a bunch of things in here talking about this. But Pipewire, I think, is going to be a big deal, especially considering that I think it really... I don't even know. Is there a way to capture video on Wayland without Pipewire? I don't know. Um, there might be, honestly. I'd have to double check that. But I know that Pipewire can capture video. And as far as more, it does work on Wayland systems if you're using Wayland. You have some options there. But, I mean, they've got great documentation here. You know, kind of reminds me of the Pulse Audio documentation. Very detailed, a lot of examples. And so, you know, you can even look at, like, the header files and stuff. But, um, you know, for the people that aren't developing on it, I think just keep a lookout for it as things, you know, head that way more and more. Um, it talks about different things that is interesting. Sandbox application support is included. So you can see, like, flat packs can use it and stuff. Uh, Multiprocessor architecture will allow the applications to share multimedia content. So that's interesting. I'm not really sure exactly where that's going to come into play, but I suppose it could be useful. Uh, the real-time playback and processing, I think, is really interesting with the low latency and all that, because that we do have a thing in uh, Linux called Jack right now that can do that. But I've had issues with Jack every time I've tried to use it. I know people that have had no problems with it, but I can't get it to work smoothly. But Pipewire knocking wood seems to work really good. So if we can get that low latency and flexibility of Jack, which it looks like we might get, and we can do it in Pipewire, I, I have to say I'm interested. So. Folks, you know, this is just a quick video about Pipewire. I'm going to tell you right now, I don't really know a lot about this yet. Um, but I do think it's interesting, and I welcome your feedback in the comments on this. Let me know if I got anything wrong, please. And also, if you're using Pipewire, let me know what your experience is, because I'm really curious to know if you have a good experience with Pipewire. Um, anyway, everybody, thanks for watching Open Source tonight. Talk to you all again very soon. Goodbye, everybody. And action.